we started off this morning by loading up the equipment that we use for darting including the dart guns and all the tranquilizer and loaded the the tranquilizer into the darts and then we went out to the blind and this was you know four o'clock in the morning so it was dark but we have night vision scopes uh... if we did want to dart during the the dark hours and then uh... we had separate stands set up for different winds so we sat on the north end of a of a protein feeder with a south wind and uh... waited for deer to come in okay so we uh... We got into the blonde maybe four fifteen or so uh, we were sitting there uh, moon was out pretty good so we could you know still see out in the fields and whatnot and up to the feeder um, we did have night vision scope so if we wanted to shoot we could then um, so we're sitting there and uh, first thing that happens we got a couple uh, a doe or two come in to the feeder to and while it's still dark <clears throat> after that the uh, sun starts breaking the, the plane it starts lightening up and we kind of see a little bit more uh, there's a couple bucks roaming around some does and whatnot we actually had uh, a doe and two of her fawns come right beside us um, and then while they were standing right behind us the uh, the fawn that we actually darted was had come in from the other side and it made his way to the feeder So that's when, at, at that time, we went ahead and took the shot on the fawn. And uh, contrary to hunting circumstances, you don't really you don't shoot for vitals or the front shoulder. You actually shoot for the back ham, um, and uh, that's just because there's less less things to mess up. Um, you don't want to get any of the drugs or puncture wounds in in this. You know, it's a whole lot safer in the ham. So uh, we. We took that shot. Uh, the dart did fall out, but we we saw it go where it went into the woods, and uh, so we went over there and searched and uh, found the fawn, and then worked it up and did what we needed to. Is that her right there? So after after he darted it, uh, we used telemetry to find the the downed uh, animal, but in this case the dart fell out, so. We just knew where it entered, entered the woods and went over there and searched and, and found it. So we got really lucky in that aspect. But normally it, the dart sticks in the deer and we can use the radio telemetry to recover them. Uh, so after we, after we got to the deer, we realized it was one that we captured as a newborn fawn this summer. And then we, we, put out, we took out the old ear tags and replaced them with new ear tags, which are its adult ear tags. And we didn't have to get a DNA sample from this deer because we already got that from when we captured it initially. We shaved the uh, shoulder and the back ham so that we could uh, freeze brand it. And the freeze branding allows us to identify individuals from trail cam pictures in successive years. So in, if we get a picture of a deer and we, we can't see its ear tag, we can still figure out who it is based on the freeze brand. So we we gave it the freeze brand, new ear tags, and measured uh, the skeletal structure of it, uh, the skull, the body, the hind leg, the chest, and the neck, oh, and the tail. And uh, then we gave it the reversal, and it took a little while to get up just because it, it was a fawn, but uh, it finally did, and, and we, we saw it walk away into the woods, and it'll be, uh, it'll be out here for for a while so we'll uh, monitor its reproductive success throughout its lifetime and and figure out uh, how many fawns it has and which which bucks bred that doe in later years and we can get really good information